Emma often breaks up with me, taking advantage of my affection for her. Every time, I try my best to persuade her to stay. The last time she broke up with me, I looked at her for a long time, then said okay. Five years have passed, and she has finally exhausted my love for her. Chapter 1 Emma broke up with me the day over a small matter. Her childhood friend Ethan was celebrating his birthday and had just returned from studying in the United States. So Emma and her group of friends arranged to gather and celebrate Ethan's birthday and welcome him back. But that day, Emma forgot to tell me about it. I had already prepared a meal before she went out, making her favorite soup that took hours to cook. I asked her to drink some soup before leaving. While she was changing her shoes in the hallway, she casually brushed me off. There's no time. I'm leaving now. As she finished putting on her shoes and was about to leave, I called out to her. She turned around, the black marble wall behind her making her look fair and sweet. Though her expression was somewhat impatient, I carried the soup over and held her wrist, saying, You woke up late and your stomach is empty. You will be drinking later, so have some soup first to pad your stomach. She clicked her tongue impatiently and said, Can you stop micromanaging me? It's really annoying. With that, she waved her hand. I knew she probably didn't mean to, but I was already running a fever and felt weak. So when she waved her hand, the bowl of soup I was holding fell to the marble floor splattering soup and shards everywhere. There was a moment of silence in the air. I paused, my gaze shifting from the mess on the floor to her face. I tried to remain calm, even smiled slightly, and asked her, are you this impatient and eager today because Ethan is back? I heard he's single again, before I was with Emma. She had openly and secretly pursued Ethan for a long time. Later, when Ethan got a girlfriend, she accepted me out of heartbreak, and we've been together since. It's been five years now. This remark hit her sore spot. Over the years, Ethan remained the most special person in her heart, and even mentioning his name felt like blasphemy to her. Sure enough, she snapped instantly, her sweet face showing impatience. Her brows furrowed tightly, and she was a bit angry. Justin, what do you mean? Are you doubting me? Can you stop being so paranoid over the slightest thing? It's really annoying. If you have a problem, then let's break up. She often mentioned breaking up with me. It had become her catchphrase. To her, breaking up wasn't an event, just a synonym for expressing her annoyance. Every time she said she wanted to break up, I would persuade her to stay. But this time, after she finished speaking, I looked at her seriously for a long time, then lightly laughed and said, All right, Emma. Her expression showed slight surprise, but she ignored me and turned to leave, because she was in a hurry. She couldn't be late for Ethan's birthday party. Chapter 2 It didn't take much time to pack up my things. Emma actually didn't like me invading her space, so I had very few belongings at her place. After cleaning up the mess in the living room, I looked at the remaining soup and put it in the fridge. This was probably the last time I would make soup for Emma. Once everything was tidy, I opened WeChat, intending to say a proper goodbye to Emma since we had been together for five years. But a mutual friend shared a video in our group chat. It was taken in a karaoke room, with colorful neon lights creating a lively atmosphere. Emma was singing, Today You Will Marry Me, with a guy I hadn't seen in a long time but knew well. It was Ethan. After getting together with Emma, I heard her friends casually complain that this song was a must-sing for Emma and Ethan whenever they went to karaoke. It wasn't that the song held any special meaning, it was just that Ethan had always followed Emma around as a child, telling her that he would marry her when they grew up. So the song became a running joke among their friends. I finished watching the video and decided not to send the message on WeChat. I figured Emma didn't need my farewell. I pulled my suitcase and took one last look at the empty, clean living room before leaving. The mess that caused our argument had been cleaned up by me as if it had never existed, I sighed, starting to feel grateful for Ethan's return. The few hours Emma spent out celebrating his return and birthday gave me the quiet time I needed to clear my things out of her home. I thought I would feel a bit sad, considering we had been together for five years, but when I got home, I was so tired that I fell asleep peacefully. Emma called me at two in the morning. She must have drunk quite a bit, as her voice was slightly louder than usual when she drank. She asked, Justin, why didn't you come to pick me up? I was groggy from sleep and replied casually. I'm sleeping. Let's talk tomorrow. As soon as I finished speaking, she hung up the phone. I was a light sleeper. So her call woke me up completely. I wondered why she called me. After reuniting with her childhood friend tonight, she should have been the gracious host and seen Ethan home safely. I didn't expect her to call and ask why I hadn't come to pick her up. But on second thought, it was probably another bet with her friends. Chapter 3 When I first started dating Emma, she went to a bar with some friends. It was raining that day, and I didn't want to intrude on her time with her friends. So I waited for her in a bookstore across from the bar, because I was worried about her getting home safely after drinking. I saw her as soon as she came out. I walked up to her with an umbrella and smiled, saying, Emma, let's go home. I always felt that we and home were two very warm words. Her friends teased her, saying, Emma, 
How did you trick someone as devoted and gentle as Justin into being your boyfriend? There was no trickery, I was the one chasing after her, but despite how others envied her, she was quite annoyed at the time, maybe I was too good to her, so much so that it lacked any challenge or excitement, people are inherently perverse, she asked me back then, Justin, don't you have a life of your own? I was very busy with work, at that time, I had just been invited to hold my own art exhibition, besides creating art, I spent almost all my time and energy on her, I remember smiling at her and saying, you are my life too, I thought that was my silent confession to her over the years, looking back, it must have been annoying for her, once, while waiting for her outside a bar, drawing and waiting to go home together, she came out and wasn't surprised to see me, she smiled, and her friends each handed her a hundred yuan, saying, you won the bet again, Emma had bet with them that I would definitely come to pick her up, she probably lost the bet this time, which is why she angrily called me, I got out of bed to get a glass of water, and just as I finished drinking it, Emma called me again, there were several missed calls, when I answered, I was a bit surprised and asked, what's up, she paused, and her voice was emotionless, she asked, Justin, I'm back, where are your things, she noticed I had cleared my belongings from her home, I thought it would take her a while to notice, I patiently and softly reminded her, Emma, you forgot, we broke up, seven hours ago, you said it yourself, and I agreed, she was silent on the other end, just when I thought the call had dropped, she suddenly said angrily, fine, but don't come begging me to get back together, chapter 4, Emma doesn't understand that I will not get back together with her, it's strange, in the five years we were together, I never once felt disappointed or tired of the relationship, nor did I ever think of leaving, but now that I've left with the tide, I don't feel sad either, my brother said my love for Emma was like the money in her bank account, he was sitting on the sofa with his legs crossed, eating chips, looking like a sage, he said, Justin, your love for Emma is like the money in her bank account, she kept overdrawing it without depositing anything, so now the account is in deficit, an interesting metaphor, I think my love for Emma is indeed in a state of deficit, my brother asked me what I would do next, I shrugged and said, work, I had already arranged the venue and funding for my personal themed art exhibition, I would need to spend about a year traveling to various countries, capturing the most beautiful scenes with my brush, the first stop was the wine river in Spain, this river, sourced from areas rich in pyrite and copper, presents a color similar to red wine, I wanted to see if I could use the river water as paint for my artwork, just thinking about it excited me, before I left, my brother said, seeing you like this, I'm relieved, I was worried you would be sad seeing Emma's posts on moments, I had seen them, Emma wasn't someone who liked posting on moments, in the five years we were together, she had only posted a few updates, but these past few days, her moments were as busy as the new year, there were photos of her and Ethan visiting various scenic spots in City A, and of them enjoying different cuisines, I could understand her joy at Ethan's return, but the frequency of her posts made me wonder if she was doing it intentionally to make me jealous, however, I quickly dismissed this thought, I swiped up on the phone screen and smiled, my brother admired me and said, as expected of you, you've taken devotion and ruthlessness to the extreme, devotion is my greatest respect for a relationship, and ruthlessness is my respect for myself, in the taxi back, I saw another of Emma's moments, she had taken Ethan to the zoo and posted a selfie with an alpaca, I exited moments and decided to change my profile picture, my profile picture was one taken by Emma, on our one year anniversary, we went on a trip, and while I was eating the ice cream she had gotten tired of, I accidentally walked into her shot of the scenery, Emma had frowned at the photo, intending to delete it, but I loved it, so I used it as my profile picture for 5 years, I changed the picture to one of my newly adopted cat, chapter 5, I received Emma's message before I boarded the plane, it was 14 days after our breakup, and she sent me a question mark, followed by, you changed your profile picture, a brief statement, although I couldn't see her expression, I could imagine her frowning at her phone, looking displeased, I thought for a moment, then turned off my phone without replying, I boarded the plane to Spain, I had a wonderful month at the wine river in Spain, I turned off my phone, leaving social media and other distractions behind, and focused entirely on my creations, I met an interesting person named Ava, when we first met, I was wading in the river collecting mud, my material for painting, she suddenly grabbed me from behind, wrapping her arms around my waist, I thought I was being attacked, despite a moment of panic, I quickly smeared the mud in my hands on her face, her face was covered in red mud, her eyes couldn't open, but she held me tightly and said in English, it will all be over soon, you have a long lifetime, she thought I was trying to kill myself in the river, I stopped struggling, my nerves relaxed, and I found it funny, I patted her hands on my waist and told her I was just collecting mud, that's how we met, not knowing each other at first, because I had smeared so much mud on her face, 
She couldn't see. I guided her to the nearest clean water source to wash her face. Her face was bright and cheerful once cleaned, and she turned out to be a fellow countryman. Meeting a fellow traveler in a foreign land is always delightful. After everything was sorted, I felt a bit guilty and apologized to her. She was quite relaxed and didn't get angry. Her smile was bright and carefree, a very sunny girl. She gave me a thumbs up, praising my alertness and quick reactions. She said she was on her way to a beach vacation in southern Spain. Passing through Huelva province on the A461 road, she saw me in the river and thought I was trying to kill myself, so she rushed over to save me, almost going blind in the process. After hearing about my creative concept, she was very interested. She was a curious person, and she decided to change her plans and stay to see if I could create paint using the water and mud from the wine river to capture the local beauty. I readily accepted her request. She was a very decent and respectful person, maintaining a good distance socially, so interacting with her was very comfortable. For example, she never disturbed me when I was focused on my work. Sometimes, when I worked day and night without rest, she would have the waiter bring food to my door. Knocking lightly three times without further interruption. Chapter 6 When I emerged from my room, more than half a month had passed. The innkeeper's son was flirting with Ava, and it seemed the locals all liked her. She gracefully declined, then looked over at me, giving me a once-over before smiling slightly and saying, When your artwork is exhibited, no one will believe what the artist went through to create it. I laughed too. I was covered in paint and mud, looking as if I had just been dug up from the ground, but I had just finished my proudest work so I didn't mind Ava's teasing. I looked up at her, smiling with excitement, and said, weren't you curious, the time has come to satisfy your curiosity. She looked at me, slightly stunned for some reason, then I took her to my studio. A two meter long painting perfectly replicated the scenery along the wine river. Her eyes showed amazement and surprise as she entered, which greatly pleased me. She admired it for a while, then turned to me and said seriously, it is my honor to be the first to see this painting. After that, I treated her to a meal to thank her for her considerate care over the past few days. Three days later, we parted ways. We were both spontaneous people and didn't even exchange contact information. To us, the other was just someone who added a bit of interest to this journey. She continued her travel plans after satisfying her curiosity, while I prepared to stay a few more days before returning home. Unexpectedly, we met on the flight back home. In first class, when I saw her, I thought I had mistaken someone else for her because she had said she would stay for another half month. Ava also looked surprised to see me and then shrugged helplessly, saying, there was a rebellion at the company. I have to go back to take charge. I couldn't help but smile. We landed in Beijing at 2 in the morning. Ava's driver was waiting outside the airport. She asked me enthusiastically, if you don't mind, I can give you a ride home first. I didn't drive, so I thought about it and accepted. Thanking her, the car stopped outside my apartment building, and I got out and thanked Ava, because I had a lot of luggage. She graciously got out and asked if I needed help. I smiled and said, I can't let a lady carry my things. She smiled at that. Suddenly, someone called my name from the shadows near the flowerbed, Justin. Chapter 7. It was Emma. Her tone gave nothing away. I turned around and saw her stepping out of the shadows into the light. She had lost a lot of weight over the past month. She glanced at Ava, then back at me, and sneered. So the reason you broke up with me was that you cheated. I tried to stay calm first thanking and saying goodbye to Ava. Although she was just a passing acquaintance, I was very grateful for her care. She considerately asked if I needed help when she saw Emma, but I shook my head, and she left gracefully, giving me space to handle the situation alone. Emma's gaze was fierce, almost menacing, like an abandoned stray cat trying to hide its panic with a show of aggression. She asked, did you break up with me because you fell for someone else? I felt a strange weariness. Over the years, I had always catered to her emotions. She was always polite and distant with others but always took a high and mighty stance with me. I was really tired of it, but I tried to keep my emotions in check and explained patiently. Emma, you were the one who broke up with me. Ava and I are just strangers who met by chance in Spain. You can't keep doing this. I paused, struggling to find the right words. My tone probably surprised Emma. She looked stunned, a flash of hurt crossing her eyes. After a long pause, she spoke softly. This was probably the first time in our five years together that she showed weakness. She said, I heard from your friend that you were coming back tonight. I've been waiting since six in the afternoon. Justin, you didn't reply to my WeChat messages. She paused and asked, in the month we've been apart, did you ever think about me? I didn't expect her to ask such a question and was momentarily stunned. But when I thought back over the past month, all I felt was satisfaction with my work. Not once, not even once, did I think about Emma. I could only remain silent. She stared at me under the streetlight, trying to read my heart from my expression. After a long moment, she suddenly smiled self-deprecatingly and said, I don't believe you. Chapter 8. Emma has a confidence that I don't believe her. I liked her for a very long time, 
So long that I can no longer remember what initially attracted me to her. It feels like my feelings for her have faded over the years, and the subsequent accommodation and care were just inertia from the residual warmth of loving her for so many years. I knew she always liked her childhood friend Ethan. She gave up the night Ethan went abroad with a teacher from their school. I don't know if young love is always so brave and fearless. That night, she chased after him to the airport alone, then watched Ethan hold the teacher's hand as they laughed and walked through the boarding gate. She sat at the airport until nightfall, the brilliant neon lights illuminating her sadness. After a long time, she stood up and walked out of the airport. I had been following her all along because I was worried about her. She vented all her anger and sadness on me, asking, are you following me to see the joke? Get lost. I stood about 50 meters behind her and quietly said, I'm just worried about you. That night, she walked back to the dormitory from the airport, a journey of over 10 kilometers that took her the whole night. It was probably her most miserable night, and I silently followed her, walking with her all night. In the morning, she reached the dormitory and, for some reason, turned around and asked me, do you really like me? Then let's be together. I was stunned for a moment, then I laughed. We've been together since that day. Four or five years now, my friends used to call me a simp, but I'm just someone who follows my heart. Life is short, and I want to do what I want. When Emma asked me if I wanted to be together, I asked myself four questions during those few seconds of hesitation. Do you know Emma likes someone else? Yes. Do you know Emma doesn't like you? Yes. Will you regret it if you reject Emma? Yes. Do you want to be with her? Yes. The answers were so simple. It's like they say, a forced melon isn't sweet, but how would you know unless you try? I calmly and rationally knew what I was doing. I was like this when I got together with her five years ago. And I'm still like this as we break up five years later. I got what I wanted. Compared to those who have never been with the person they like. I don't know if I'm lucky or unlucky. But at least I can let go when it's time. I have let go of Emma. Chapter 9. Emma still stood in front of me. Her small figure almost entirely covered by the streetlight's shadow. She looked up at me. As if trying to find some trace of feigned sorrow on my face. I don't know why. But I suddenly asked. Emma. Do you remember the first time you broke up with me? She was probably surprised by my question and froze for a moment. The first time she broke up with me was about three months into our relationship. She did it over WeChat. And then she forgot about it and went to Tibet with her friends for seven days. When she came back, I was waiting for her outside her dormitory. It was raining that day. And I was soaked and feverish. When she saw me, she was startled and asked, What are you doing here? I was quite sad at that moment but still smiled at her. She probably softened because her heart had already given up on Ethan. So it didn't matter who she was with. And we got back together. I asked her, Emma, when we broke up and you went to Tibet, did you ever think of me? Even for a moment. I sighed and said, I felt the same way as you did back then. Her expression darkened with my words. She stepped back a few paces, then turned and left, in her eyes. Coming to find me tonight was already a great concession giving me face and respect. The fact that I didn't reciprocate probably felt like a slap in the face to her. She had every right to be angry. When my friend found out that Emma had come to see me, he was surprised and asked, could it be that Miss Tin realized after losing you that she actually likes you deeply? I just smiled without saying anything, rather than saying she liked me. It was more likely that her possessiveness was at play. The humble boyfriend who had always revolved around her, after the breakup, neatly cleaned up everything and disappeared completely from her world. No WeChat messages. No attempts at reconciliation. No usual caring gestures. It's like a pet dog that always wagged its tail and followed you around suddenly stopped responding to you one day. You would naturally be curious and wave a bone in front of it to test its reaction. To Emma. I was that pet dog. She came to test me because my post-breakup behavior surprised her. So she waved a bone in front of me to see if I was still within her control. If I showed even a hint of longing or affection. I believe she would quickly lose interest and walk away. My friend said I was overthinking it. And I stayed silent. Chapter 10. Emma began to appear in my world frequently. It's quite funny. After we broke up, she sought me out more often than she did in the last year we were together. At first, it was because she found a stuffed bear I had left behind. This was the first birthday gift Emma gave me because I had a habit of hugging her while sleeping. It was an unconscious behavior. So she gave me this bear to hug at night. She called and asked, Do you want to come and get it, or should I bring it to you? I paused and said, No, just throw it away. Emma was silent for a long time, just before she hung up. I added, if you find anything else of mine, feel free to dispose of it. No need to contact me. She didn't respond. That night, Emma called again. I didn't answer the first time, but the phone kept ringing persistently. I sighed and picked up. She was drunk. I was slightly surprised because she always knew her limits and never got drunk. She slurred. You left something at my place. I patiently said, I don't want it. Please throw it away. Also, I paused. Emma, don't call me late at night anymore. I won't answer. She ignored me and continued. The necklace the one designed by Cesar. 
that you like. I bought it, and you forgot to take it. This was the anniversary gift I had mentioned to Emma for our fifth anniversary. Two weeks before the anniversary, she asked what I wanted. This was surprising because in all the years we were together, I was the one always giving her gifts. I told her I liked a necklace designed by Cesar. It was meaningful because the designer created it inspired by his five-year relationship with his boyfriend. It held a lot of sentimental value. Emma nodded and said okay. But on our fifth anniversary, she forgot not only the necklace but our anniversary itself. Three days later, Ethan returned from the U.S. And she was eager to celebrate his birthday, preparing a birthday gift and a welcome home party for him. Then we broke up. C. The reason I don't love her anymore is just the accumulation of all these moments. My voice turned cold as I said, it's too late, Emma. There was a commotion on her end, and someone took the phone, apologizing to me, Justin, I'm sorry. Emma is drunk. After a moment of hesitation, she asked, she seems really upset. Is there no chance for you two to get back together? I hung up the phone. After hanging up, I stared at the ceiling, feeling that saying I was completely unaffected would be a lie. After all, I truly loved her once. I just sighed at how extreme her change in attitude was. I couldn't reconcile the previously cold Emma with the current one. Her newfound gentleness and thoughtfulness always seemed out of place to me. Chapter 11 After that phone call incident, Emma disappeared for a long time. The next time I saw her was three months later. We broke up in early summer, and in the blink of an eye, it was late autumn. The weather was turning cold, and she was wearing a long black coat. Although we had broken up, I had to admit that she was still stunningly beautiful. She was leaning against the gate of my apartment complex. Smoking. The period when Ethan and his teacher first went abroad for further studies was when she smoked the most. Combined with drinking and staying up late, she ended up in the hospital. After being discharged, she subconsciously controlled it. I didn't know why she started smoking again. She heard my footsteps and looked up at me. She looked a bit tired and said, Sorry, I know I'm disturbing you, but my mom is coming to City A this weekend, and I haven't told her about our breakup yet. Strangely, although Emma didn't like me when we were together. Her mother was very fond of me. Maybe it was my calm and steady demeanor. Different from the spoiled brats in Emma's social circle. Her mother had a heart condition. I hesitated. And Emma's expression showed a bit of pleading. Just for two days. I'll explain everything to her slowly afterward. I sighed and nodded. Seeing me nod. She breathed a sigh of relief and took a step back. Surprisingly polite. Saying. Thank you. Before leaving. She handed me a bag. It's getting cold. And you need to take care of your throat. This was an old issue of mine. My throat often got inflamed during the transition from autumn to winter. Every year, Emma would have a friend buy me a particular health supplement from Australia. And as long as I took it in advance, it would prevent the problem. I was surprised she still remembered. I held the bag and watched her leave, feeling a mix of emotions. Chapter 12 Emma's mother stayed for two days and then left. To avoid suspicion, I moved some of my belongings to Emma's place. After her mother left, I packed up my things. Emma quietly followed me around. When I was about to carry my suitcase downstairs, she suddenly grabbed my hand. She looked down, so I couldn't see her expression. She asked, can't you stay? After a pause, she looked up at me, explaining with some restraint, there's really nothing between Ethan and me. I admit that when he came back, I felt some waves of emotion, but that was just a normal reaction to someone I once liked. I never thought about being with him. Her voice had a subtle choke. She paused and then continued. It was my fault for breaking up with you. It won't happen again. Justin, give me another chance, please? I had never seen her like this. Feeling troubled, I turned to leave. Maybe because I was preoccupied. I missed a step and fell down the stairs. I broke my calf bone. Emma stayed with me in the hospital, helping me with the admission procedures and taking care of me. When I woke up after the surgery, she was asleep next to my bed. Hospital beds were scarce, and there were four patients in one room. Her body was squeezed between two beds, unable to stretch out looking quite pitiful. Even in her sleep, her brows were furrowed, looking uneasy. Her other hand was still covering mine, as if she wanted to be ready to wake up if I needed anything at night. I thought for a moment and didn't pull my hand away. The anesthesia in my leg was slowly wearing off, and the increasing pain kept me awake. I lay there, recalling a time long ago. Back then, I had just graduated and entered the workforce, carrying the title of a genius graduate. An art gallery investor invited me to dinner. Being young, I didn't have much sense of caution and thought he genuinely appreciated my talent. It wasn't until he poured me a third drink and put his hand on my shoulder that I realized something was wrong. There was something in the drink, and I felt weak. Later, Emma appeared out of nowhere and smashed a bottle over the investor's head. Then she took me away. I found out later that she was supposed to go to a concert with friends that night. Emma never used this incident to seek credit or blame me for causing her to miss the concert she had been looking forward to. For some reason, I suddenly remembered her goodness. In the barren soil of our love, there had indeed been beautiful moments like these. To be honest, I was somewhat swayed, 
Chapter 13 Emma stayed with me in the hospital until I was discharged. I had told her she didn't need to, that my friend would come and accompany me. I wanted to cut the ties quickly, but she insisted on taking some responsibility, thinking that she was partly to blame for my fall down the stairs. My friend, hearing that Emma was there, joked that there was a chance we might get back together and decided not to come to the hospital. The elderly lady in the next bed smiled at us and asked, Young man, your girlfriend is really considerate. Such good girls are rare nowadays. I smiled, and when I looked up, I saw Emma standing at the foot of the bed, watching me nervously. After a while, she suddenly smiled. The smile spread from her eyes to her lips, and even after we were discharged and got into her car, she looked at me and said, I'm very happy, Justin. Just now, when that lady called me your girlfriend, you didn't deny it. I opened my mouth but didn't say anything. I just felt it was unnecessary because she had been with me for so long, and explaining to outsiders that she wasn't my girlfriend would inevitably lead to more questions. And after all, she was a young lady. I didn't want to embarrass her in front of others. Since we were about to leave the hospital, I just wanted to avoid any additional trouble, but seeing the smile on her lips, I sighed and remained silent. Emma wanted to continue our relationship. If it were the current Emma, I actually would be willing to give it a try. Could the love lost in the dust of time really come back? This thought persisted until Emma took me to her house. I had fallen in a rush that day, and my luggage was still at Emma's place. Her mother had brought me some dried fish that I liked very much, so after leaving the hospital, we went to her house to get my things, and when the door opened, I saw Ethan. He was wearing an apron, holding a spatula in one hand, looking like the men of the house, smiling kindly, and said, Oh, Emma, you're back. You said you'd be taking Justin home from the hospital, so I thought you probably didn't have time to eat. Come on in. He waved us in, wearing the watch Emma's mother had given me, which I had left on Emma's bedside table after we broke up. My gaze shifted from the watch to Emma's face, then I stood at the door and suddenly laughed. It was a laugh of release and calm. At that moment, I knew that Emma and I would never be possible in this lifetime. Whether it was five years ago or five years later, when we stood together, the one who didn't fit in was always me. But that was okay. I didn't mind anymore. I stood politely and distantly at the door, declining. No need. I'm in a hurry to get back. I won't bother you. Then I turned to Emma. I won't go in. Please bring my things out. Thank you. She looked a bit pale, glanced at Ethan, then at me, and said before going in to get the luggage. I'll explain everything to you later. I didn't say anything. After she went inside, the smile on Ethan's face gradually disappeared. He looked at me with hostility, as if I were an intruder, and his smile turned venomous like a snake. You won't make me lose a bet, will you? I raised an eyebrow in confusion, and he smiled and explained. The day I came back to China, they said you and Emma had broken up. Emma and her friends all bet that within three months, you'd be crawling back. The bet was later extended to six months. Emma and her friends all bet you'd come back but I bet you wouldn't. He asked me word by word, you won't make me lose, will you? I looked at him and didn't answer, just said calmly, I don't know if you'll lose your bet, but I do know Emma's friends should win theirs. When your teacher in America dumped you and you had to come back, they bet on whether you'd act like a pretentious coquette and get Emma to take you back. I laughed, seeing his pale face, and said, looks like her friends should have won. Just then, Emma came out with my luggage. I took it and smiled, thanks, no need to see me off, my friend is coming to pick me up so I won't bother you. Finally, I looked at Emma with a relieved smile and said, Emma, if you want me to keep a good impression of you in my memory, please don't contact me again. That was the last thing I said to her and the last time I saw her. It was also the last good thing she did for me. Chapter 14 Two years later, I saw Ava at an art exhibition. She was standing in front of my painting of the Wine River. I walked over and stood beside her, looking at it together. After two years without seeing each other, we didn't engage in polite small talk. It was as if we were old friends. She turned her head and smiled at me. I saw the news about your exhibition and decided to come. Just as impressive as I imagined. She paused, then asked with a smile. After the exhibition, can I invite the artist to dinner? I smiled back and said, of course, time flies, the seasons change, the sun sets, and the moon rises. After spring comes summer, autumn, and winter. Life is long, with many landscapes to see. You have to experience them yourself to truly understand. As for what the future holds, you'll only know by living it. 